This is the second part of the video explaining how to calculate the pH of diprotic acid solutions. So the previous video we just kind of went over the equations and the approaches and in this video we'll just do an example. So um, we've got a diprotic acid here, um, an example H2A. So again A just represents the rest of the molecules and then the two H's are the two protons that could be donated. There are two pKa's associated with this acid, so removing the first uh, proton, that equilibrium constant, the pKa1, is 4, and pKa2 is 8. So let's start off with the pH of a 0.01 molar H2A solution. Okay, so um, this is a weak diprotic acid, but we treat this as though it were a weak monoprotic acid, right? So we're going to follow that approach where we just imagine that mostly it's just the first proton that comes off. So we have H2A in equilibrium with H plus plus uh, HA minus as the conjugate base. And so that's governed by Ka1 and we can find the value of that um, from the pKa. So it's going to be 10 to the negative pKa1 power and so that's 10 to the minus 4. All right, so we're going to use that and then we go through and uh, solve the weak acid problem using our um, rice table in the usual way and so we get for the Ka expression that Ka1 is equal to x squared over the formal concentration minus x and in this case remember x is going to be two things it's going to be the H plus concentration and it's also going to be the HA minus concentration All right so we're going to know two things when we solve this equation for x F is our formal concentration and so that's 0.01 molar and so we're going to uh, work this equation out by um, solving the quadratic equation. So we're going to multiply this denominator here um, both sides by that denominator and so we end up with Ka1 times F minus X equals X squared. We distribute the Ka1 through the uh, parentheses there so we end up with Ka1 times F minus Ka, oops, Ka1 times x equals x squared. And then we're going to move everything to the um, right-hand side of the equation here. So we'll get 0 equals x squared plus Ka1 times x uh, minus Ka1 times f. So this has quadratic form, right? It looks like ax squared, so a constant times x squared, plus another constant times x, plus a third constant, and that all equals 0. So in our case, a is going to be 1, because that's what multiplies the x squared here. Uh, b is going to be Ka1 there, and c, so this, this last constant here, right? plus C, so what does C have to be? Plus a negative Ka1. So be careful with that negative sign, right? It has to come along for the ride here. So Ka1 times F is this last constant here, and it has to have that negative sign because there's a negative sign here, but in our formula it shows it as a plus sign, okay? So that's why we put the negative sign there. So um, you'll want to solve the quadratic equation using uh, these bits. You're going to get two roots from solving that. And we're going to want to take the positive root because you can't have negative molarities. Remember that these square brackets represent the molarities of these substances. And negative moles per liter, well, that's kind of nonsense. All right, so I'm going to go solve this uh, quadratic equation um, just by punching that into my calculator. Or you can use a quadratic equation solver online. And that positive root works out to be 0 0.0009514. All right, and so that's the molarity of our H plus concentration. And so to find the, um, so this number right here, it equals two things, right? Remember, it's the H plus ion concentration. It is also our HA minus concentration. So we're good there. Um, so to find the pH, we just take the negative log of that number, and we get a pH of 3.02. Okay, so there's our pH. Um, so now let's calculate a few other uh, concentrations. So we would like to know well, what is the concentration of um, H2A? So that would be the undissociated acid that's still in our solution. So we started with 0.01 moles per liter of it. What is it now? Well, it's going to be F minus X. And so um, you'll remember that F is 0.01. And we're going to subtract from that 0 0.00095. And what do we get? we get something that's still pretty close to 0.01, so it's 
905 molar. So that's going to be our H2A concentration. And then last, we might want to figure out what little bit of A2 minus is present in our solution. So that would assume that our HA minus, which has this concentration right here, that a little bit of that HA minus dissociates, deprotonates. And so what is that? And um, we discovered last time that that is equal to the uh, Ka2 approximately. And so our Ka2 is 1 times 10 to the negative eighth molar. All right, so those are the concentrations of all the important p species in our solution, along with the pH. Very good. So let's do another example of a uh, different type of problem. And so now we want to find out the uh, concentration of a 0.010 molar uh, sodium HA solution. All right, so the sodium HA solution is going to give you sodium cations and HA minus when it's dissolved in water. And so this HA minus is that amphiprotic species. And we want to know what is the pH of this solution as well as the important other species in our solution as well. So we'll go through and calculate all of the uh, acid-related species in our solution. Okay, so let's uh, do this. So you'll remember that for the amphiprotic species, we have two formulas that we can use. The um, exact one that we get from uh, using systematic treatment of equilibrium is this. So it says that we're going to take Ka1, multiply it by Ka2, multiply it by F, then we're going to subtract from that. Ka1 times Kw, and then in the denominator we have F minus Ka, uh, sorry, these are pluses, F plus Ka1, and then we take the square root of all that. So that's the formally correct way to do it. Um, normally we can use as an approximation uh, that pH is going to be equal to one half of pKa, pKa1 plus pKa2, so that formula is really useful because now we can just plug it in. So 1 half pKa1, pKa1 is 4, pKa2 is 8. And so we just add those two together, we get 12. Half of 12 is 6. So we expect our pH to be 6. And that's going to give us a H plus ion concentration of 10 to the minus 6 molar. So H plus concentration is just 10 to the negative pH power, right? So that's how I got that. All right, so um, we will get a slightly different number if we plug things into this equation. So now let's calculate the uh, pHs of some of our other species. So very little of this HA species is gonna dissociate in the solution. That's why we get very little H plus. In fact, that's not so different from the amount of H plus that we would have um, just due to pure water. All right, so if we, our HA minus concentration is going to be approximately equal then to what we started with. What you mix is what you get for uh, the intermediate species, so 0.01 molar. So it's gonna be real close to that. Um, so now we wanna figure out the uh, concentrations of some of these other species. And so we can do that using uh, the Ka equations. So Ka1 is gonna be equal to the H plus ion concentration. We know what that is. Uh, then it's gonna be times HA minus. We know what that concentration is. And so we're looking for the concentration of H2A. And so we solve this equation, we get H2A equals the H plus concentration times the HA minus concentration divided by Ka1. So let's plug all the numbers in there. The H plus concentration is 10 to the minus six. The HA concentration is 0.01, which is the same as 10 to the minus two, right? If I move my decimal place one, two, 10 to the minus two, divided by the Ka1, which is 10 to the minus four. So this is math we could do in our head, remember, because we, when we multiply things with exponents, we just add the exponents. So we're gonna get 10 to the minus eight here, divided by 10 to the minus four. That's the same as 10 to the minus eight times 10 to the plus four. And so that gives us uh, 10 to the minus four power when we're all done, right? So plus four minus eight gives us 10 to the minus four power. So our H2A concentration is pretty small, uh, 10 to the minus four power. So a little bit will form that species. So we do the same thing to figure out our A2 minus concentration. So we're gonna start with the Ka2 expression, which is H plus times the A2 minus concentration divided by the HA concentration. 
So we know what all of these are except for the A2 minus. So we're going to solve this for the A2 minus concentration. Uh, that equals Ka2 times the concentration of HA, which we know, divided by the concentration of H plus. And so that's going to be 10 to the minus 8 power. That's Ka2. The HA concentration is 0.01, which is 10 to the minus 2. And then we're going to divide that by Ka, uh, sorry, by the H plus concentration, which is 10 to the minus 6. And so that equals 10 to the minus 10th divided by 10 to the minus 6th. And so that gives us, when we uh, do the math here, 10 to the minus 4 for uh, both of those. All right, so 10 to the minus 4 molar. And so that's how we figure out all of those um, forms of the concentration. So we've got one more example to do, is we've got a 0.01 molar solution of Na2A minus, so disodium salt of this acid. And we want to know again, what is the pH? And all the concentrations of all those other species. Hmm. So with this, what this gives us is a solution that has two moles of Na plus and one mole of A2 minus. So the sodium does not affect the pH of the solution, but A2 minus is a weak conjugate base. So we solve it like a weak base problem, right? And so we end up solving this equation, Kb1, which is equal to Kw divided by Ka2. And so that's going to equal the concentration of hydroxide from which we can find the pH times the concentration of HA minus divided by the concentration of A2 minus. And when we use our rice table, we will discover that that equals x squared over F minus x. It's the equation that we've seen several times before. In this case, though, x is going to be equal to our hydroxide concentration and also to our HA minus concentration. So once we know x, we can take uh, the hydroxide ion concentration and find pH from that. So let's do that. Um, we need to plug some numbers in here. So Kw at 25 degrees Celsius is 10 to the minus 14th power. Ka2 is 10 to the minus uh, 8th power. And then we've got uh, x squared over uh, 0.01 is our formal concentration minus x. So again, we're going to use the quadratic equation to solve for this. So multiply both sides by this denominator here. And we will get. Let's see, 10 to the minus 14 divided by 10 to the minus 8 is going to be 10 to the minus 6 times uh, the formal concentration, 0.01, which is 10 to the minus 2 minus x equals x squared. Distribute through our parentheses. So we have 10 to the minus 6 times 10 to the minus 2. That's going to be 10 to the minus 8 minus 10 to the minus 6x equals x squared. Write it in quadratic form, 0 equals x squared plus 10 to the minus 6 times x minus 10 to the minus 8th. All right, so we can plug that into our quadratic equation solver, and we'll get two roots, and we pick the positive root. And so that works out to be um, x equals point, uh, zero, 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 nine, nine, five, zero. All right, so we can move our decimal place. One, two, three, four, five. So it's 9.950 times 10 to the negative fifth. All right, very good. So now we know what our hydroxide ion concentration is. We also know our um, HA minus concentration. And they are both 9.950 times 10 to the negative fifth. And so we're going to take the negative log of that number. That will give us the pOH. And that gets us a pOH of about 4. Then we can find the pH because pH plus pOH equals 14. So 14 minus the pOH is going to be equal to the pH. And so 14 minus 4 is 10. And so we have a basic solution with a pH of about 10. All right, so now we want to find the concentration of a few of those other species. So we would like to know the uh, concentration, say, of H2A. What is that? And uh, we can find that from uh, looking at the Ka1 expression. So the Ka1 expression is going to be uh, the concentration of H plus times the concentration of HA minus divided by the concentration of H2A. So we solve this equation for H2A like we did before. So we get the concentration of H2A is equal to the H plus concentration 
times the HA concentration divided by Ka1. All right, so we know uh, those values. The H plus concentration, we found the pH, uh, which was equal to 10. And so our H plus concentration is gonna be 10 to the negative 10th power. In the HA concentration, we found that. Let's scroll down so we can see that. Remember that the OH minus concentration is equal to the HA concentration, which is that 9.950 times 10 to the negative fifth. So we're gonna plug that value in up here, 9.950 times 10 to the negative fifth. And our Ka1 value is 10 to the minus fourth. And so punching that all into our calculator, we get the really tiny value of 9.95 times 10 to the minus 11th molar. So we don't have very much of that at all. So what about the uh, A2 minus concentration? So remember, we started out with some of that. So how do we get that? Same thing, except we're gonna use the Ka2 expression to figure that out. And so that's gonna be the H plus concentration, which we know. Uh, times the A2 minus concentration divided by the uh, HA minus concentration, which we also know. So we're gonna solve this equation for A2 minus, and we get that A2 minus, two minus, is equal to um, Ka2 times the HA minus concentration divided by the H plus concentration, All right? And so that's going to be uh, Ka2 is 10 to the minus eighth, HA concentration is that 9.95 times 10 to the negative fifth. We're running out of space here, we're gonna squeeze it in. All right, divided by uh, 10 to the minus 10th for the H plus concentration. And so we solve that, punch that into our calculator, and we get, we get 0 0.00995. Remember, we started off with a solution that was about 0.01 molar. We're still pretty darn close to that, so only a very small amount of this weak base has actually reacted with water to take a proton. So only a little bit has. All right, so there's some examples of how we solve uh, those three kinds of problems.